Welcome to Asset TV, I'm Jillian Kemmerer. Today we're joined by Wisdom Tree Global CIO Jeremy Schwartz, who will be discussing his firm's approach to quality growth investing and how clients should be thinking about allocating in this category. Jeremy, thanks so much for joining us today, and technological advancement has been a dominant force in the markets this year, so I think it makes sense to start there. How does innovation, particularly in the tech sector, impact the Wisdom Tree quality growth strategy? Well, thanks for having me here. Uh, you know, this definitely has been the year of AI. I mean, you hear all this excitement about ChatGBT and what's happening and who's benefiting from all this advances in AI. And you see a lot of these large cap tech stocks, whether it's a Microsoft, an Amazon, a Meta, the big stocks with all the data, you know, what drives AI is the data. And these companies are, are benefiting disproportionately to the small cap stocks or more unprofitable speculative stocks. And interestingly, the way we look at quality and growth, we have basically all these magnificent seven stocks that you're so much about as our seven largest holdings in our quality growth strategy. So I think we're benefiting uh, now, but, but, but over the long term, we expect to continue to benefit from all these advances in, in technology. Well, piggybacking off of that, can you tell us a little bit about Wisdom Tree's approach to developing funds in this category right now since you're seeing so much success? Yeah, so Wisdom Tree has been a champion of quality investing for the last decade. And, and really, you know, our one of our flagship funds today is our quality growth fund. We believe, you know, what does quality mean? It, it's sort of high return on investment, high returns on capital type businesses. We use return on equity as one of those premier measures. I called it your Buffett style of investing. And and when we first launched this quality growth, we owned Apple before Warren Buffett owned Apple. And so we, we you know, it's sort of symbolic of the types of companies he invests in and buys in. Um, you know, we've got about 15 billion now in this sort of quality family, uh, but this is our first expression on the true growth side. You know, we were doing quality selection from a dividend universe. This is quality, but with other growth characteristics. And so you're looking for fast sales growth, fast earnings growth, but high returns in capital versus what you hear a lot about the unprofitable tech companies as driving some of the markets in the last few years after the pandemic. This is identifying truly profitable companies that are growing their earnings and sales faster than the typical company. And what are some of the challenges that you see associated with the fund? And what are the steps you're taking to mitigate them? Well, I think the biggest risk now uh, is, you know, can these companies deliver on these higher elevated expectations? You know, so when, when I look at the growth profile of our basket, you know, the S&P 500 is around 11% sales growth for the last five years. Our basket is six points higher, 17%. So they're clearly delivering higher growth than the typical company. Can they keep on delivering that higher growth? You know, so we rebalance our basket twice a year. Uh, these fundamentals don't change day to day that much. So we're, you don't need to rebalance all the time, but you know, sort of long-term, can they deliver profits? Can they deliver their growth profitably? Which is why we use those return on capital measures like return on equity. But finding the, the fast growers that sustainably grow is what we're trying to do. And, and that's certainly the highest risk, but uh, clearly these companies are delivering right now. We've touched on this a bit, but let's drill a little deeper. What are the opportunities associated with the fund? And where are you seeing the best value in quality growth investing right now? Well, I touched on the Magnificent Seven. I think that is what's leading the market. Uh, and these are companies growing their earnings much faster than the regular stock. So I think that is really where the opportunities are today. Uh, you know, But as things evolve, by refreshing the portfolio, coming back to those return on capital and, and earnings growth will refresh the portfolio as it evolves. But today, Magnificent Seven are, are roughly 50% of our basket. Um, and you know, it's a hundred stock portfolio. So it's a bit more concentrated than your typical stock uh, basket. But you know, we, we think there are good opportunities in those big tech stocks today. What is the most important takeaway for clients who are considering an allocation to this category? And how should they be thinking more broadly about quality growth investing in 2023 and moving forward? When you look at the market this year, there's been a huge dispersion across standard growth indexes. And you know what you find is what's under the hood really matters. What goes into the index construction, we talked about the process focusing on high return on capital businesses and marrying quality with growth. You know Some of the other index providers started including momentum as part of their growth screen. And you know, for a while, what was leading the markets was the same tech stocks that people were associating with growth. But what's interesting at, at the rebalances last year, what was leading the markets higher was energy. What happened this year was energy's earnings collapsed. You know, oil wasn't as high as it was last year. And so it, it showed strong earnings growth last year 
good momentum last year, but not the same this year, you know? And so I think you're seeing huge diversion between some of the traditional growth indexes and our quality growth with QGRW. Uh, and so I think you just got to be cautious of how your index providers create their indexes. And there is its big differential. And, and we think the combination of quality and growth together is really a great combination. Uh, and so I think that's just the, the key points that we would, we would leave you with. Wonderful, Jeremy. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us and sharing more about the fund with our viewers today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, I'm Jillian Kemmerer alongside Jeremy Schwartz, Global CIO for Wisdom Tree. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at wisdomtree.com investments. Read it carefully.